An associate editor at the Washington Post is going after Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, accusing the conservative Republican of being a, quote, manhood obsessed hypocrite in an op-ed titled Josh Hawley's Problem with Masculinity. In the piece, Jonathan Capehart vilifies Hawley and claims that he is advocating for masculinity based on racial resentment. He wrote this, but as clownish as Hawley comes across, we dismiss him at our own risk. He is selling a vision of masculinity to white America that has more to do with prejudice than manliness. I, Harris, they, they always come up with a new, more far-fetched <laughs> liberal uh, lunacy. I mean, this is another example. It's, it's all about prejudice, apparently. Yeah, everything comes down to race. I'm, I'm not exactly sure um, how this does in this occasion, but I, I get it because the R word is what gets everybody's attention. So when did masculinity turn out to be such a horrible thing? When did femininity turn out to be? Because I always think that if you hate one thing, then you must hate the other. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't understand how we got to the point in this day and age of talking about masculinity and femininity when we are talking about pronouns and everything else. So it comes down to race. It comes down to gender. And these are all ways to cancel people. And I say just step away. And, and apparently he has because he's been pretty quiet. He has been. We yep. do have a resident expert on masculinity. <laughs> he happens to be in the middle yep. seat. Yes. There it is. Jimmy. Yes. It's funny because I married a woman who grew up on a dairy farm, so I'm actually more of like a housewife. <laughs> but uh, no, I get it. And I'm with Holly on this one. And, you know, this is the frustration, okay? Masculinity is why we're here in the overall scheme of things. We're here as a free country because our grandparents stormed the beach and saved Private Ryan. This generation is watching Private Ryan and complaining Wasn't that the that cast isn't inclusive enough. You know what I mean? But the thing is, when you try to break this down along racial lines, this is the real hustle because minority children suffer from a strong male presence in the home at a much higher rate than anybody else. So if you're going to get out there and champion strong male role models, it's only going to help communities, as studies show, across all racial barriers. That's why when they say, like, oh, you know, race. It, when, when you go to race now, everybody knows it's because you've lost the argument. You know, they say in comedy you're not supposed to open with your closer. Calling things racist in this day and age is the closer. And if you're opening with it, it means you don't have anything else. So I'm going Hawley. Even though he doesn't look terribly masculine, he's got very pretty hair. But I'm just saying. <laughs> he does. And you he's do, also too. I mean, I'm pretty enough, you know, but I got a makeup team. Hawley's full-time pretty. He's you're a snack. pretty in that suit. <laughs> he's a snack. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, Laura, <laughs> Senator Hawley, I mean, what a conservative rock star. I got to interview him at Turning Point. This guy is going after big tech. He told me, you know, Afghanistan, that's something that's going to be investigated in a Republican Congress. I think that's at the root of the problem is he's one of the best and brightest in our party, in my view. Oh, yeah. Well, they always go after. I look the way they went after my father-in-law. Look at the way they go after Ron DeSantis. Uh, Senator Hawley is no different, obviously. But, Jimmy, I, I love the point you brought up. When I was reading this, and by the way, it's the Washington Post, so let's take it all with a huge <laughs> grain of salt. Everything that they've said in there, all I could think about was my grandfather who fought in World War II and the men that died, young and old, to form our country. And they're the reason that our society has been able to progress truly as much as we have so that we have individuals at the Washington Post able to write such ridiculous columns like this. It is because of masculinity. Harris, I agree with you. When did it become a bad thing? We need men in our society. We need women in our society. We need everybody. We do. We need everyone. We need fathers in the home for children, Jimmy, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's so crazy to try and attack something that actually has been very beneficial and such a huge part, truly, of our history. Yeah. If yeah, you don't I, appreciate our men, then I doubt that you appreciate our women. That's probably yeah. true. You know, the Washington Post, democracy dies in darkness, they say. Mm. Well, common sense dies in darkness. <laughs> and we need, we're putting light on this. But this <laughs> toxic macul masculinity nonsense, it's everywhere. And really, I think the, the yardage claimed by this op-ed was really astounding. It was like 20 football fields. And what I mean by that is the lengths that this author went to and inciting another author as well in deconstructing and pushing Holly into a box. And then they had the nerve to do exactly the same thing that they were accusing him of, which was being unwielding. Right? So they said, you know, mm. incidentally, Jason Kander presents a refreshing version of masculinity um, that views vulnerability, vulnerability as a virtue. You can be the best man one can be for one's family and community. No, that's exactly what Josh Hawley is doing. That's exactly what masculinity is, is through that strength, being the best man you can be. So here are they saying that instead, 
aversion to labor organizing, support exclusively <laughs> for heterosexual marriage. I mean, they were in the weeds here, absolutely attacking this man for daring to put forth his faith and his vision of masculinity, and they're saying the exact same things that he did. I find it preposterous um, and really curious that anyone would accept this argument whatsoever. Yeah, and there are issues like labor organizing. These are all code for liberalism. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so that's at the root of this is he's not a liberal, and therefore the Washington Post is going to write hit pieces. Well done, I guess. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.